We're going to continue to take a look at the Suspense API in the experimental React version. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, I did a earlier video going over the Suspense API for fetching data. I'll link that below in the description. I recommend starting there. So we're going to follow up on that code and add some new things to it. So to start off with, we are going to talk about how we can fetch new data after we already fetched some, how we can handle errors whenever we're fetching, and then lastly, how we might do post requests uh, with suspense. So let's start off with this first one, how we fetch new data. So remember we had created this function called create resource, and it is this guy right here, returns an object with two basically promises of data that we wanna then use in our application. So this is basically an initial data that we have, but let's say we wanna get more data. Like we may want to uh, pass a parameter in and get a next page, or we may want to just refresh the data and get new data itself. So the way we can do this is instead of just having a static resource up here, we can put the resource in state. So we can say const use state from react. And then here I can say resource set resource. And then the default value for use state is now going to be this, in this initial resource up here. So I'll paste this in. Um, and then whenever we want to update the resource, say pass in a new parameter or refresh the data, we just call set resource with the new resource. So I'm gonna create a new button here at the bottom called refresh data. And since our data is just random, we can just recall this create resource function. So in the on click here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say set resource and then call create resource. Now, if I wanted to pass in a new parameter, I could, for example, here, I could be like page five and in our create resource function, we could go and fetch a different page, for example, if we wanted to. But in this case, I'm just gonna call create resource again, because again, our data is random anyway. Um, so let's take a look at this in action now. So we can see that we have some data here. And again, I'm gonna open up inspect, I'm gonna go to network and I'm gonna to go to slow 3G so we can see this uh, slowly happen. So I'm gonna say refresh data and we can see it's both loading a new number and a new person and then we can see the data shows up there. And we can click this again and watch it happen again. Um, there you go, so that's how we can refetch the data. It's gonna make an API call and then display the data there. Now you may be interested to see that we didn't have any kind of suspense around our button here, right? It's because we didn't actually make um, or read the promise in this on click method here. All we're doing is we are starting to fetch the data or starting the promise here. And then we stick the promise in our state and we don't read the promise until we go into our person component here and we say person uh, dot read, right? And so this is where we're gonna actually read the promise. We're gonna see the promise is loading and then we're gonna throw the promise and uh, suspense is gonna catch it. So wherever you read the promise, um, that's where you wanna wrap your component in a suspense. And again, that comes back to our create resource here, and we are using this wrap promise function to throw the promise whenever it's loading or whenever there's an error. Okay, so that is how you can do it when you want to, say, fetch new data. The one thing that I wanted to mention here was all the examples on concurrent mode and suspense all have uh, you initializing the promise either outside the render function or outside the rendering of the component um, or an event handler, right? So this is an event handler and this is outside the component. Now they kind of hint at that it's a bad idea to start loading a promise or fetching API inside the render method. Um, but I don't think they explicitly say it anywhere. And so one thing that I'm tempted to do is something like this. So here we can do in our use state, we have a function here and we can call create resource, right? And so this is only going to be initially called uh, whenever this component is initialized. And so I think there's gonna be some circumstances where it's gonna be handy to initialize the API call in the render. 
uh, in cases where you only want the API call to happen whenever the component is actually being rendered, for example. So this may be one way to do it, um, but I'm not sure best practices around this yet. Uh, but we can save this and we can see it's going to work in the same way. Uh, we can go back to online. We can see that we get initial data for this and then we can refresh if we want to get new data. All right, so let's go on to the next thing to take a look at, which is handling errors. And I'm going to just comment this out and go back to our initial resource because I know this is for sure a good way to do it. Now let's say we go to, I don't know, offline for example is one mode that we can turn and we try to refresh data. So it crashes our application right now. So instead of crashing the entire application, we can uh, catch that error and do things with it. So actually we can come back here. The way we can do that is with error boundaries. And we can just use the error boundary from the React docs here. So I'm going to copy this and note Unfortunately, we have to use a class component. So I'm going to create a new error boundary. So if you're unfamiliar with error boundaries, these are a component that you can wrap your application in. And it's actually going to catch any errors within the uh, children of the component, which we're going to see it's going to make more sense in a second. So here I'm going to export my error boundary. and we don't really need a constructor. We can just say state is equal to has error. And we have an error, which is going to be an empty string here. And then in this get derived state from error, we're going to say has error is true. And then I'm also going to set the error into the state. And so when I set the error in the state here, I can then in the render function display the error message if I wanted to. And now again, if we wanted to do any kind of uh, logging, we could in this component did catch, but in this case, I'm not, I don't need to, but you could do something here. And you know, we could just console.log there. Let's do that, might as well. All right, so then the render function, we can say if there's an error, we could just display there's something wrong. We could also display the error message. So here I could say this.state.error.message, for example. And actually, instead of an empty string, let's just do null. All right, so we can save this. And then otherwise, if there is no error, then we just display the children. So now the error boundary, we can wrap our component. So notice again here with the error boundary, I'm wanting to wrap the person because the person is the one that is going to call read and that is where the error is going to be thrown from, right? So you may be thinking that we want to wrap the error boundary in the button here because that's where the promise is being called, um, but we actually want to wrap the person because that's where the read is happening. Okay, so I have my error boundary wrapping this. So now let's see this in action. All right, so we have our initial data loaded and we're going to click offline here. And then I'm going to push refresh data and we can see something went wrong, uh, failed to fetch. Now you'll notice it was still able to uh, do this promise and display the data there. So that worked just fine, but you can see we have an error boundary and we can display that here. And I don't think there's any need to make this an H1, so let's just make it a div. That way it's not just freaking gigantic. And this is something where with the error boundary, we can wrap as much of our application as we want to though. So let's say we didn't want to display the loading number if there is an error fetching this, we could make our error boundary encompass more of our application, right? So now my error boundary, if there's an error in either one of these, uh, we don't display either of them. So let's turn this back online. And we'll let this load. Now we'll go offline. We'll refresh and we can see something went wrong, failed to fetch. And it didn't display any of them. Uh, so there you go. So that is how you can handle the errors you could encounter when you're actually fetching data and using suspense is with the error boundary. All right, so lastly, we're gonna talk about how you may go about doing post requests. So I tried this out and 
I couldn't find a non awkward way to do it. So I'm going to show you one way you can do it, but it feels a bit odd to do it in this manner. Um, and so there may be some better practices that come out that makes this make this a little smoother. Um, or maybe suspense is not something you use with post requests. We'll see. Um, but let's let's just take a look at it one way we can do it. So I'm going to just create another button here, which I'm going to call call post request. And so what I want to do here is in the on click, I want to make a post request. Now I'm just going to use this website right here called request bin. So this allows me to send post requests and then it's just going to tell me when I actually made a post request to the website. So I'm going to copy this URL. They'll give you a random URL. If you want to come to this website, it's free. You don't even have to create an account to test it out. So that's what I'm going to use. And so in here, I'm going to say const p is going to be my promise. So I'm going to make a post request to this server. So method is going to be post. And again, this could be any server we want to be making a post request to. I'm just using this as an example. And then the body, I'm going to JSON stringify. And we're going to say hello world. All right. And then after this, maybe I want to say dot then. And I want to say x.json. And here I'm going to say dot then again. And I'm going to console log x. And then we're going to return it. And then here we could put any logic we wanted to happen after the post request finished. For example, I don't know, maybe we want to navigate to a different page or whatever. We could have a history.push here or something. Um, in this case, we'll just console log. So I'm going to take this promise here and we can just write it out to be clear. And I'm going to do the same thing, same treatment as I am with our uh, person API over here. So with the fetch person and random number, we would wrap it in a promise. Uh, so we're going to do the same, same thing here. So I'm going to say wrap promise. And actually, let me just export this. And again, the wrap promise is making this work with the suspend API. So we're going to say wrap promise, promise. And then I'm going to create a state for our post resource. And so for the initial state here, um, I'm, I'm not sure the best thing to do for this, but for example, I could just make an object that has data inside of it, or I, I can call it result. And this has a function called read. And by default, it just returns null, right? So this is before we even made the post request, it's just going to return null. And then I can set the post, re post uh, resource right here. All right, so we are making the post request and then we are wrapping in a promise to make it compatible with suspense and then we are updating the state. So now this post resource, whenever we make the call is gonna have the promise uh, information inside of it. So now there's just the fact of actually displaying this. So for example, let's say I wanna show this loading person indicator whenever I make the post request. Well, I could make my new component here, which I'm gonna call post result. And we're just going to pass in our resource. And we'll create this new component. Post result dot js. We'll say resource here. And here we'll say result or just data is equal to resource dot result dot read. And again, we could really name this whatever we wanted here. So this could conditionally be null. So we could say if data is null, so if we don't have any data, here we could just return null. Otherwise, we can display some data. So the result of the post request. And we could display the data. And we can stringify this because it's probably an object. 
So the idea with this now is if I come over here and import this real quick. Uh, when I press this button to make the post request, it is going to show a loading person indicator. And then when the post request is finished loading, it's actually going to display the result of the post request in this component. So let's see this in action. So I can see my information here, and I'm going to make this slow so we can slowly watch it. I'm going to press call post request. Oh, cannot. Oh, look, <laughs> air boundary caught this. Cannot read read property read of uh, undefined. So this I said. Oh, you know what? Did I just miss the name? So I called this resource. I called this result, and. Let's just debug this by console logging what the resource is. All right, so we'll con. Oh, this is super slow. Let's go back to online mode. All right, so I can see that this is a function. Oh, I know what I did wrong. I need to make this an object called result. So I just needed to match uh, the object that I'm creating up here, result, result here, and there we go. That should work. It just, it just the answer just hit me, but I think this would be a pretty good way to just debug this is I can console log what the value of resource is. All right, so let's test this out now. Let's make it slow again. Slow 3G, call the post request. You can see it's loading my person and then the result we can see was successful from the post request. Uh, so it's kind of a roundabout way to do this, right? Because I'm basically wanting to show this loading indicator here uh, whenever I make this post request. And so to be able to do that, we send our promise into this state, and then we send this state into a component which is inside of the suspense that we want to trigger the loading for. Now, there may be a way smoother way to do this, but this was just one way I thought of that we could integrate the loading state for a post request. So there you go. That is the three things I wanted to cover, how you can fetch new data, handle errors, and do post requests with the Suspense API.